we're speaking out about the outer circle right now, and we're talking about uh, their their responses, their attitude to you, and uh, you're attempting to again build a program either from scratch, although we're particularly talking about which it happens most of the time, you inheriting something and needing to flip it from whatever its philosophy was to a biblically, bibliocentric, what we call competing biblically philosophy. Again, we've addressed previously that we're talking about that even in the public sector, though we wouldn't describe the philosophy that way, we'd describe it in a different way because they wouldn't want it to say or couldn't allow it to say Bible or that kind of thing. But for... for uh, uh, as a means of just conversation, so we're on the same page as a class. That's the way I'm verbalizing it. So you realize we may be in a Christian institution, but we're going from a philosophy that was different to this philosophy. And so whenever I say competing biblically, that's what we're looking at. So we just spoke about the criticalness of building relationships with the outer circle, but from in terms of getting them to buy in or the potential of that. And now we want to, a second point is a different thing. It's is them feeling like I buy, in, buy into them. It's one thing for them to buy into me, but the chances increase it'll happen if I buy into them. Meaning don't go to a school where you don't buy into the vision uh, because your job is to implement their will and their goals have to become your will because you work for them. So it's kind of a dualism going on. You have your program, but you're working for the city of Blanksville or you're working for the University of Blanksville, or you, whatever, whether it's Parks and Recreation or the Baltimore Ravens, there's an element where you're working for an entity and, and, and it's important for the relationships of their view of you and your view of them. Now, hopefully the key players have hired you, so they have bought into whatever it is you sold them on in terms of the interview process, and you have to evaluate whether you want to work for them. And what that's going to look like. So the points in this part is I need to share the vision of the institution at some core level. Not in every way. I might not. I mean, there's certain departments or ways they do. You're not going to, you're not going to buy into everything in terms of your natural responses. But you have to make a decision and a choice to be about their goal, their best, their will. Frankly, for you to want God's will, God's will is that you be a blessing to the people you work for. That's God's will. And so when I come into an entity, whether it's an institution or a park and recreation department, I have the desire to implement their will, whatever it is. I better know what their will is so that I feel positive about partnering with it. This is a huge deal. You might just say, I just want to coach. That's not going to work. It's not going to be sustainable in the vast majority of cases, because unless you're super good and do win all the time, whatever that, because that's probably all they care about in most cases. If you don't care about them, chances decrease they're going to care about you. They'll put up with you if you keep succeeding. But once you stop succeeding or don't succeed as much, it ain't going to last for long. It's going to be the NFL. It's going to be the not-for-long league or the not-for-long job in that case. And so this concept uh, that I need to buy in an institution, use an example for me, if I went to a university and it was important that, that I want to be part of the process of higher education. If I don't care about higher education and I'm, or, or education and I'm at a junior high or a university and I don't care about school, I don't care if the kids go to class, I don't care if they engage, I just want them to get by and stay eligible, that's not going to help. And in particular, if you're trying to honor God and obey God, that's not going to be obedience because you're there to help them reach their goals and they believe that football will enhance the process of their goals, not hinder it. And that's why when you go to a place, whatever it is, and there's not a match between their goals and your goals in terms of your view of them, that's not sustainable. It increases the chances it's not going to go well from the start. And so it's not about you. It's about them because you serve them as your part. I serve the city of Tacoma park and recreation department if I'm a youth coach in the city of Tacoma. And at some point, I voluntarily agreed to whatever it is their priorities are. Now I can say, I don't care about them. I just care about our team. We want to be good. We're saying we don't see that as biblical, number one. And number two, it's going to hurt the process because if anything goes sideways or they think you don't care, chances are they'll care less about you 
and you've now lost that absent opportunity to build synergism with the outer circle. That's our point. You can't just say it's just about us and about our players and the people in this room. You hear that all the time. It's not only about you. It's about God if you're a Jesus person. It's about caring about others who are in the outer circle and considering them. The Bible says consider others better than yourself. This needs to be part of the process there. And so I both need to buy into the concept of transformation of education through education. Granted, that doesn't have to do with eternity, but that school probably isn't concerned about eternity. When I work for Safeway, they're not thinking about eternity. They're thinking about making money, providing a product I need to buy into that vision and give my whole heart, clear mind, strong will, great passion about it. This is what we would understand the attitude toward work. And at some level, that is all in place. If all you do think is about saving the lost, et cetera, and you don't think at the practical level that you're working for somebody that that's not their goal, that's going to be problematic. You're going to spend all your time witnesses to the people buying stuff and you aren't going to do your job. You're going to lose your job. Rightly so. You might say, I was obeying God. No, you weren't obeying God because obeying God is to do your best and work for your employer in a way that brings God glory and how you handle the process, even if that employer, in your opinion, isn't godly or is even wicked. The Bible even sets down principles about what that looks like. You have to think about these things in our opinion. We're trying to have a holistic, holistic view of things and not just think about sport by itself in a, in a vacuum. That wouldn't be helpful. So I also have to think about this, them students, these, these kids, as if they're student athletes. Again, whether it's high school, junior high, youth sports, they go to school until they're out of college in most cases. And you have to buy into the vision of the educational institution you either directly work for or you supplement. So even in youth sports, I need to care, this is our opinion, that even though it's not tied to an institution, that these kids do have to do homework, they have to be uh, uh, competent at some level in the educational process, and I need to supplement that because I promise you the Parks and Recreation Department doesn't want you focusing on outcomes on the scoreboard and not caring if your kids do well in school because the Parks and Recreation are part of the city, which is also part of the school district, and that stuff has interaction that would be in your best interest to uh, enhance. Um, we can, I can tell you stories because I'm old enough about people that didn't care building bridges with their higher powers, and when things didn't go well um, uh, on the scoreboard, then it didn't go well for them in terms of their job. And at some point, it bit them that they didn't have a heart to serve the higher goals of those that they were serving. At some point, when they didn't care about the institution's goals and they just thought about their players, then it didn't go well for them and it doesn't glorify God in the process. I remember at the college I went to, which had a history of the students not being student athletes. They were the athletes. They weren't student athletes, and, and the institution wanted them to be students first. Now, that's not necessarily the case at other places where they want them to be athletes and hope they get by in the classroom. Well, uh, that wouldn't be our thought because our thought wouldn't be you want to get by as a student. You want to maximize your ability as a student and as an athlete. We would consider that biblical. I won't get into that. When I met with the first time for the faculty, it happened to be a university, I made a statement to them, which was part of our vision and mission statement that our kids will go to class all the time every day. Well, they laughed because their history over the block of years that the program had been there uh, was that that wasn't, that wasn't a stated goal or a practice goal of the leadership of the program that I was involved in. It wasn't the experience of the faculty who some hated the sport and others put up with the sport and others liked the sport, but they wished the students were a little more, the student athletes were a little more engaged. And I went on record to say, I didn't have to say it, that it was biblical, though it is, that our people are going to give their whole heart a clear mind, a strong will, and great passion to the educational process. Now, does that mean that's where we were today? No, that's not the point. That was the target, and we're going to get on a track toward that target, one of which is they're going to go to every class all the time, and if they don't, they're going to ask forgiveness and make some level of retribution. This was our commitment. They laughed. Three years later, I had resigned due to unrelated issues. I remember meeting with a faculty person for coffee after I'd resigned, and, and we had a conversation, and they brought back, they, they reminded me of that day. Now, the bottom line is even after three years, we weren't even close to perfect. But the kids knew it was a priority and were better at it than they were, and the administration 
ended up believing that this was our vision and mission. And we were serious about it because we made decisions that gave repercussions to the players who did not hold to the vision and mission that we held. And they voluntarily joined our team and their responsibility was to implement our will and our wills for, was for them to be student athletes and there were repercussions for them not having that heart. And we moved the chain forward. If we'd been there 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, we would reach a point of much closer approximation of perfection of class attendance. And we're serious about that, which is why you got to be clear. You got to be strong. You got to be committed. You got to stay at it, do the right thing the right way and stay at it. We were not kidding about them attending class and respecting the educational process. We were not believed in the front end based on their frame of reference. At the back end, they realized you were serious about that. That's, that's right. I was serious about it the first day. I'm just as serious about it now. You've got to know that going into the situation. What's the country you're in, right? We talked about the foreign country. Each school, each recreation apartment, each youth team is a foreign country within a continent. So it may be this youth team in the midst of baseball club sports in your city. You have a team culture and you have a youth sport culture. You better know the culture and you better approximate the culture's goals in ways that they're going to be part of the responsibility.